Okay guys, hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I'm coming to you guys from a different angle. This is my reading chair. My books are over there. It's just that these videos are gonna be long today and I need some back support because I'm almost a 30 year old lady. So yeah, today I'm gonna do translated books that are in the horror, dark, or spooky genre that I think you should check out. And this is a recommendations video because Starting August 1st is the Spooky Smart Bitches Readathon that I'm hosting with Jordaline from Jordaline Reads. Um, this whole horror, dark, spooky book series recommendations has been to help you guys with the different prompts. So today's recommendations are to help with the translated novel prompt. So first up on the list is Such Small Hands by Andre Barra, and this is from Spain and is Spanish to English translation. So this one is dealing with an orphanage and there is a young girl named Marina who comes to the orphanage and she decides that she is going to play some games, some very violent dark games. And I love the evil children trope. I especially love evil little girls. There's something about it that just, I don't know. What does that say about me? My parents would definitely say that I was a hellraiser child from down below. This is the book of my childhood. Maybe, depends what she does, because I never murdered anyone, but we'll see. Next up is a Swedish translation. This is The Electric State by Simon Stollenhag. I recently read this for The Reading Rush, and it's in my vlog, which I will leave a link down to below. But this book has some crazy, dark, beautiful art in here. I mean, Simon Stollenhag's illustration style is just phenomenal um, and the great thing about the storyline is that the story is even darker than the illustrations and so if you are looking for something that's really creepy and dark and beautiful this would be for you to check out so you're following a young woman who's traveling across the country uh, with her robot. I gave this four and a half stars. I highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it. So next up is a translation from Argentina. This is Come Madre by Roque Lare? Lareque? Oh my gosh, my accents are so bad. I'm so sorry. Uh, but this one is following a doctor in Buenos Aires in 1907, and the doctor is trying to investigate the exact moment between life and death. And then we fast forward and we're following a performance artist who is trying to experiment with the same thing. So to me, this sounds a lot like the Japanese book by Shusako Endo, uh, The Sea and Poison, which I recently read for my Japanese mini burst. Again, I will leave that down below, um, where a doctor is doing heinous things to experiment with the human body up into and beyond the point of death. I'm always here for kind of body horror and people experimenting. I can't honestly say that I always have a fun time reading it, but it definitely gives me a lot to think about. So I like more of the kind of psychological thought experiments that happen from these kind of novels. Okay, so the next one I wanna recommend is a Japanese translation, and this is The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. So this is actually a graphic illustrated series, manga, if you will. And this follows a young girl who's living in this world where there's inside and outside. Inside are walled off cities. Outside is basically anywhere outside of these cities. And the, the difference is that the outside has these beasts which roam around. And you find out that the beasts were once humans that had been cursed or given this sickness that turned them into beasts and it's contagious, like if they touch you. When the first volume opens, we're following a very young girl. She's so cute and precocious, but she was abandoned in the woods and is being raised by a beast. So technically she's an insider being raised in the outside by an outside beast. Then the only rule is then they cannot touch. And I just love this series. I think I've read four or five volumes by now. If you might wanna read like a dark book that's not necessarily as dark as the rest, this would be a great recommendation for you. I really, really love it. So the next one I have to recommend is another from Argentina. So apparently I'm sleeping on Argentina and I might do a mini burst or two of Argentinian literature because they seem to have some great 
horror and weird literature coming out of there. So this is Fever Dream by Samantha Shrevelin. This is again set in a hospital. We're following a woman who is on her deathbed. And when she opens her eyes, there's a young boy sitting next to her. And it's not her son and she's not his mother. And then they start a dialogue and it sounds dark. I want to know what the horse energy cover is about. Like, what is that about? What is happening? Why is it shelved as horror? What is going on? I just want to know. So next up, I have an Indonesian short story collection. This is Apple and Knife by Inten Paramedita. And one, can we just appreciate this cover together? I want this cover so, so bad. And this is kind of a retelling of Indonesian mythology and ghost stories and fairy tales exploring women's bodies and how women have to act in society. That's all I know about it. I just know it's shelved as horror and I'm in love with the cover. Do I need anything else? No, this is on my to buy list. I want this so bad. And I've also not successfully read anything from Indonesia yet. I tried to read Man Tiger and I DNF'd it, so I'm gonna give it another go and I will read Apple and Knife sometime soon, hopefully. Okay, let's talk a book that is as fucked up on the outside as it is on the inside. This is In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. So I couldn't find this anywhere, so I eventually gave in and bought an ex library copy that has been like totally ripped up, torn open, and yeah, it's just all messed up. But I don't mind. I like books with a little bit of character, so. Um, this one is following a night tourist who usually guides Western, usually men who come to Japan to hit up all of the best like prostitute night spots. And so we are following this man named Frank who is from America. And at first he seems like the ordinary American. He's overweight, he wears a fanny pack, and he's interested in these seedy spots. And then we realize Frank is not who we thought he was because he ends up just slaughtering all of the people in the first place they go. So it goes from there <laughs> and it is just really gory, really dark. There's one scene where I was just like, huh? okay, Frank. <laughs> yeah, Jack doesn't like it either. But um, yeah, so in the miso soup, is a true Japanese horror novel. Um, it is probably tied with my favorite from Ryu Murakami and I really do recommend it. It's also pretty short so um, it would be easy to bang out for the readathon. Okay next up I have a South Korean translation. This is Human Acts by Han Kong. It's like historical fiction but it's horrifying. Uh, so this follows a, mostly a student uprising, uh, a political uprising in Gwangju, South Korea which was squashed really, really heavily by the military. And basically they just slaughtered, massacred everyone. And each chapter is following a different point of view. So from the young middle school boy who is stacking and helping identify corpses for loved ones, to one of the corpses rotting in the fields, to mothers who are missing their children who have not returned home. This is just a horrifying set of vignettes about the Guangzhou uprising and the horrific ramifications. So if you're looking for something that was really impactful and taught me like a very serious history lesson because I'd never even heard of that before, I don't think we studied any Korean history in school. And uh, yeah, so highly recommend if you want something truly very dark and disturbing. So the next one I want to talk about is The 20 Days of Turin by Giorgio Di Maria, which for some reason just makes me think of Giorgio from Daft Punk's album. Anyway, this is an Italian translation about a church-run sanatorium, which there's one thing I love more than hospitals, and that's sanatorium. So within this sanatorium, the youth create something called the library, which is a space where they get together and they share their thoughts and they share these really zealous ideas and really dark macabre like plans and thoughts that they have. And when kind of the people running the sanatorium find out, they decide to dismantle the library and hide it, yet it persists on into real life. 
I just think it sounds so dark and it sounds perfect, honestly. It sounds completely up my alley. Honestly, if I'm keeping it 100% real, this was what I was going to read for the translated challenge because um, my library has it. But we went into another stage of lockdown and all the libraries are closed, so sad enough, I cannot read this for the translated challenge. But I think that you guys should if your libraries are open because it just sounds so, so good and you can let me know how it goes. Speaking of pandemic, let's talk about the next novel that I'm gonna recommend. This is the only novel on this list that isn't out yet. It comes out August 4th, so you could get it like squeaky clean at the beginning of the month and still read it. This is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Bisterica, another Argentinian release. So Argentina, I will do a mini burst after the one I'm currently doing right now because I think they're just killing it. Um, this is about a pandemic which breaks out, but it basically makes meat taste poisonous or is poisonous to humans. So instead, there's this plan to make special meat, which is kind of soylent greeny, if you're aware of that at all, where it's human. And they do different ways to make it taste better for human consumption because humans can no longer eat other animals. Um, and I just think it sounds really weird, really bizarre. One of my subscribers told me that they'd read this and that it was really great. So I might be ordering this once it releases in August. I really can't wait to get my hands on it and I just have the highest of hopes. So this is the second Samantha Schweblin recommendation. This is Little Eyes, which came out, I think either this year or last year. And this is about Kentuckys, which are little, eyes that are in things. So you can basically choose in this society to be a watcher where you control a Kentucky or the watched that has Kentuckys in like your home. So I just think it sounds so weird. It is shelved I think as sci-fi horror which isn't something that happens often. So this is one that is my one of my possibilities to read for the translated challenge for the Spooky Bitch Readathon. Um, I just think it sounds so, so good and so creepy. All right, next up, let's do a French translation. So this is Perfume by Patrick Suskind. So we are in 18th century slums in France and Jean Baptiste is born and he has an extraordinary sense of smell. And he decides to become uh, an olfactory like master where he mixes his own perfumes. And this leads him down such a dark route that he wants to be able to capture the perfect smell, whether that be from corpses or just different places that you'd be like, okay, slow down, okay, that's a little weird. But he is on this journey to find like the perfect sense. And mm, it's dark, it's dark, man, and it's weird. It's so weird, but it's so good. So I really recommend this if you're looking for something weird that's one of the most what can I say? Sensory, visceral books that I've ever read. Like if I had to choose a book for the scent smell, it would be this book. My next recommendation is Toddler Hunting and Other Stories by Kono Taiko. This one I just got in the mail the other day. I've been waiting for it to come in. This is a horror collection of creepy tales. The most famous one that's called Toddler Hunting which just sounds dark and weird and creepy and I can't wait to read it. So this is another one that might be for my translated read for the readathon. So if you can get your hands on this, go for it. I had to look pretty far and get it shipped from afar. Um, but if you have a library or a bookstore open near you that has like really good translated sections or a really good Japanese section, definitely check it out because not only this, but Japanese horror is just the shit. Like, Am I right? So my penultimate recommendation for this video is The Good Son by Yu Jong Jong. He is known as South Korea's Stephen King. I don't know if it's true, haven't read him before, but I'm really intrigued about this one. It's a mystery thriller horror novel with gore, a lot of gore. So we open and the 26 year old main character wakes up and he thinks he's had a seizure because he is physically disabled where he has seizures randomly very often throughout his life and he'll black out, have a seizure and then like wake up on the floor. Only this time when he wakes up, he's covered in blood and his mother is murdered 
downstairs in their like sole apartment and he thinks that he did it because he's covered in blood and the evidence pretty much looks that way but he obviously has never had any aggressive episodes during his seizures before but if there's anything i love it's an unreliable narrator who's not an alcoholic in a mystery thriller so i cannot wait to get to this i've heard nothing but good things and also the cover is creepy af i love it so much and I really think that South Korea has some amazing up and coming voices. So if you're into it, go for it. So my last recommendation for today is Hex by Thomas Old Hevelt. And this is from the Netherlands translated from the Dutch. I don't think I've ever read from there before. And this one sounds great, like all of them. Uh, it's about a small town that was plagued and haunted by a witch from the 17th hundreds and they basically tortured her and sewed her eyes and mouth shut and now she haunts the town and doesn't let anyone leave uh, who is born there dies there you can never leave and anyone who comes in also can't leave um, and the witch is muzzled and she walks around the town wearing a muzzle and haunting people um, and the town has pretty much kept practices in place and surveillance in place to make sure no one leaves and dooms other towns to the same haunting uh, when young folk decide to put everything in the haunting situation on social media and basically the shit hits the fan and it says like practices from the 1700s come up again and they have to like do certain things to appease the witch and i'm like oh my god this sounds so good so dark and I don't know, there's something about faces sewn shut that really just make me like, <laughs> but like in a good way. So that finishes up my translated recommendations. Um, if you have made it this far, please leave some soup emojis down below in the comments um, and I will show you some love. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what translated books you are most excited to get to in the readathon or just what your most translated favorites are. That was not English. Or what your favorite translated recommendations are. Uh, and I would love to put them on my TBR. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys down below. I hope that you are doing fabulously. And I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye!